Hello, beautiful people, and welcome. In this video, we are talking about exponential growth function. Now, this is going to be a very brief video. I know you typically say that, but that's not true. This one is very, very short. We're just going to do one example, technically two, and that's it. All right. Exponential growth is just what it sounds like. You are growing exponentially. So this is a variable in the exponent spot. And we are not linear. This is not a rise over run type of situation. This is a curve, as we're going to see later in our graphing of exponential functions. So this is just kind of like an introduction. So exponential growth, here's your formula, is very similar to geometric sequences. So your A, think of it as your A sub 1. Your A is your initial amount. Your R is your growth rate. And T is your time in years. That's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and start with an example. So let's say you start at a bank with $500. So you go to the bank, doesn't matter what bank, you put in $500. This is imaginary. And the interest on that account is 8% every year. So it accrues interest. The interest is calculated on that account every year of that $500. Write an equation. So let's go and write the equation. Start out with your formula. Y equals A times 1 plus R to the T power. So your Y is just your equation. You can write F of X if you choose. A sub 1 is your initial amount. So you start out with $500. Now, before we continue, I'm actually going to go back up here. This is super important that I forgot to mention. Your growth rate needs to be converted from not being a fraction. So your R is not a, uh, not a fraction. I think it's a fraction. It's not a percent. So you need to convert to a decimal. So for example, the rate, so how interest is accrued, like the percent of it. So in this case, 8%, so you're going to convert that to a decimal. So here's 8%. To convert this to a decimal, place a decimal at the end and do two spots to the left. So I have 0 0.08 as my rate. So I have 1 plus 0 0.08. And my T is every year. Now, because we don't have like the, the actual year, we don't know what how many years, it's just going to be T or your variable if you want X. That's, that's it. We just need to simplify it. Y is equal to 500. This is 1.08 to the t power, and you are done. That's it. That's your equation. So the beginning amount is how much you're starting with. Your rate is technically the percent, but when you're doing it inside the formula, you need to convert it to a decimal. Your t is the time in years for when you're writing the equation. You leave it in terms of t. Now let's go ahead and do part B of that question. How much money do you have after four years? So four years is the quantity, it's your time or your T value. So you're gonna take your equation, your Y equals 500, 1.08 to the T power. In this case, your T is four, and you're going to evaluate. Use a calculator for this. So for my calculator, I'm gonna say 1.08 to the fourth power, I'm going to multiply that by 500. And then you have to pay attention to what your question is asking. It has to make sense. For example, this one here is saying how much money. Money has two decimal places, right? You say you have like something and something, something. So when we are rounding our answer, you have to make sure you round it to what makes sense. So the quantity of money is $680.24 
after four years. So you started out with $500 because you have an interest rate of 8% in 500, in 500 years. In four years, your $500 becomes 680. That's assuming that you are not touching that money. All right, that is it. Let's go ahead and do part two of this video for a, our decay.